this episode we'll be taking a train to Jiang Ye and enjoying the scenery of the Chilean mountains on the way. There are beautiful mountains, snow covered all over them. Touring the Dansia coloured mountains. There are basically four scenic spots, this is the fourth one, the best spot apparently. You can taste some mint in there. Trying out local delicacies such as teas and firecracker noodles. Talking to the Yuga people in the Kangla grasslands. And just to tell you a little bit how the prices work, everything here is one RMB. Showing you traditional Chinese barbecue. Just a second ago, I heard some Tibetan monks chanting over there. It sounds like everyone's in prayer. And visiting the Mati Sir Horseshoe Grotto Temples. So we've just uh, we've just left uh, Lanzhou and we're on the train now, going to uh, Jiangye. Yeah, and outside you can't really see it now because we're in a tunnel. There are beautiful mountains, it's snow covered all over them. It's absolutely an amazing sight. We're seeing castles, we're seeing mountains, we're seeing even a little bit of farmland. Not right now because we're in, we're in a tunnel. The Chilean mountains are at the south end of the Heishi Corridor. They are an absolute beauty to behold as we ride this train. These snow-capped mountains provide the ideal climate for herding yaks. The Heshi Corridor is a long, narrow passage stretching for 1,000 kilometers. It encompasses the Chilean mountains and all of Lanzhou. It is a strikingly inhospitable environment that surrounds an oasis. So we're just at the Jiangye West Station. Yeah, we just arrived, and as you can see from here, we're in rural China. Yeah, it's nice to be in rural China again. Along the way, we've been seeing many small villages, yak herders, and all sorts. So um, a lot of snow. And a lot of snow too. So we're now in the taxi um, <laughs> on the way to uh, Jiangye. Um, basically, we got a reasonably good deal. I mean. This, this lady here, the taxi driver, she offered a deal whereas she takes us from the train station to the coloured mountains and lets us hang out there for two and a half hours then she'll take us back to the Jiangye city centre. It's, it's about 30 to 40 kilometres to the coloured mountains and going back again that's 80 kilometres. So the whole package including the two and a half hours there, it's going to cost us 150 RMB. It's not bad, no. Um, but anyway, um, um, a funny word in Chinese, gulu gulu, which means um, murmur or gibberish. She basically just said that we were speaking in murmur or gibberish. I mean, uh, yeah, well, maybe we're talking gibberish, but I wouldn't say we're murmuring. She also seems to think we're Soviet. Yeah, she thinks that we're from the Soviet Union, which of course doesn't exist anymore. There you go, it's nice to be in small town China. Nigga, ni shou nigga, gulu gulu. <laughs> As you can see, we're still in this taxi. One thing I want to point out is this woman is an absolutely crazy driver. She drives on the wrong side of the road all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yep, she drives straight forward as a traffic. Hello. Yes, she's very <laughs> proud of that. You want to laugh now? And straight into, straight into danger. It's actually kind of scary. Oh, we're on the wrong side of the road. So we're finally on the coach uh, in the Dansia mountain range. We met some students there um, from Union Zhejiang. Uh, they're also uh, well here traveling. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet some friendly people. It really is. I'm a girl. I'm too. <laughs> As you can see outside the, well you can't really see because of the exposure, but it's a beautiful day. Welcome to Jiangsu. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, maybe we'll go on a trip to, to Jiangsu sometime or Jiangsu. Welcome to England, welcome to America.
Thank you. All right. As you just saw it there, <laughs> we made some friends on the bus. Yep. All right. Well, friendly to people. Well, we'll see you when we find a bigger mountain. Rainbow Mountains of China within the Zhongye Geological Park are a geological wonder of the world. It has been voted by many Chinese media outlets as one of the most beautiful landforms in China. It is 322 kilometers square. It was established in December 27th, 2005. just a whistle stop tour I mean what I filmed really doesn't give this place any justice um, it's huge it's a, I mean there's it's a massive area I mean in to be realistic you'd probably need two to three days to properly like take in the colored mountains and the music is distracting too. yeah that, that's the only other thing they play music um, when you're really trying to take take in the natural sounds of the of the environment but there's music playing on speakers everywhere kind of like cheesy music and that doesn't really work either for me. Yeah, me neither. Zhongya lies in the center of the Heshi Corridor. Zhongya has a population of over 1 million. There are 26 ethnic minorities that reside in Zhongya including the Hui, the Uyghur, and the Tibetans. So it's going to be our first meal here in Janya. We're both pretty hungry. I mean, um, we didn't eat the whole day. We didn't even drink any water today until just now. We didn't have any water for breakfast. We didn't have any breakfast. When we left the hotel um, in uh, in Land in Lanjo at about um, seven, well, past seven a.m. Um, and now it's three p.m. Well, four p.m. So it's been a long day, but um, it's been worth it. And uh, right now I'm about to try um, a lamb noodle dish, a local speciality. What are you getting, Eric? So we've yet to see that flower roll thing and um, also as you can see here we also have um, a kind of tea which uh, they've got all sorts of stuff in there, it looks amazing but um, we might not try that depending on the price but um, we've had kind of sloppy service here, we ordered some dishes and it took forever to so I don't know if we're going to get this tea or not, but we'll think about it. So this uh, lamb dish is pretty good. Um, however, it is mainly um, like pieces of ravioli. There's not much meat in there. Flavor-wise, it's pretty good. 
Well, my dish just arrived. As you can see, it's basically just red, kind of bland. Not really that good, honestly. The ice said it was sweet, but it's not. Well, I'm about to try a local tea here. As you can see inside, we've got many different kinds of Chinese herbal tea. We've also got the Chinese red bean and yellow sugar. It's a kind of quite a strange mix. There's all sorts. There are all sorts of um, herbal teas in here, not just one type. That's kind of rare in China. Usually, you just get one type of herbal tea, but in here, it's a mix. Mmm, that's good. It's sweet. You can taste some mint in there, and well, there's even some sesame seeds in there too. And yeah, you can taste a lot of different flavors. Alright, this is our first, uh, we just arrived here and this is our first friend from Sudan. Ni hao. Ha Oh, quits. Lugia 我在家里,家里的,休息的了现在。那你,你,你三十四十年之前,你年轻的时候,你住哪里?在,呃,小时候。在康乐的,康乐大草原。那,那时候我们是方言。一模为主。么念?那时候你的生活是什么样?那时候
。那你的生正常的日常生活是怎么样呢？我们就是以放牧为主嘛，就是日常生活就是早上起来把羊牛赶到草原上，晚上再赶回来，就这样。现在他们那个乌古族话，他们在小学、中学都都学吗？嗯，那个政府都帮你们学吗？嗯，就是，那,那就挺好的，就就保留你们的文化是吧？嗯，是。Well, according to our friend here who has a guest house uh, in in uh, the grasslands, um, no Europeans have passed through these parts since October 2018. It's now April 2019, so we are the first Europeans. We are the first. That's kind of nice to know that we're going through the uh, the beaten track. I kind of wish. Well, folks, this is the making of a horror film right here. No network. A bunch of cows in the middle. Chinese. What's essentially the Chinese outback. Like Wolf's Creek or something. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that film. It's kind of like that. We're not in the Australian outback. We're in the uh, the Chinese one, and um, this guy's driving us to sell our organs. Who knows? Huh? Could be the making of a good film, though. Okay, so here we are in the grasslands. Great to be here. It's a very overwhelming experience. I'm sure the video cannot capture the beauty of this place in person. It is absolutely amazing. Would you agree, Cal? Yeah. We've got snow-capped mountains, grasslands, yaks, sheep, I think. Too. Sheep, yurts, cows over there. It, yeah, it's just amazing. We are really in rural China, my friend. The Kangla grasslands are located in Sunan Uyghur Autonomous County. They are around 1,786 square kilometers. The Uyghurs are a Turkic and Mongolic group of people. They now live in permanent housing and farm local land. Grasslands, and now we're in the middle. Now we're in the middle of what's essentially cow country. You see a lot of yaks, a lot of green. Back there, I saw a man with some horses. So yeah, it's actually almost like being in the Midwestern United States in some ways. A lot of, a lot of barren um, grassland with cows. Unfortunately, the driver here, uh, he doesn't have time to show us um, around much more today. He's got something to do. Uh, although it was a great time, out of this world experience, once in a lifetime experience, uh, definitely, definitely recommend coming to this place. Um, unfortunately, um, the audio has been pretty shit because um, our fluffy friend here, the wind protector, doesn't seem to be working in the wind. So. A bit of a technical error there, but um, it is what it is, I'm afraid. Can't plan for these things. All right, well, we found some traditional houses over here, and unfortunately, the people are a little shy, they won't let us film inside. But as you can see, this is how a traditional Uyghur lives. So, uh, great news. I mean, we were waiting for the bus um, for a couple of hours. Um, we were trying to get back from the grasslands back to Jiangye, yeah, and um, in the end, we had to hitchhike. And fortunately, uh, this Tibetan guy picked us up and um, offered us a lift to um, uh, Jiangye yeah for free, uh, which is really nice of him. Yes, here he is now.
哎，你好，那个你是你是哪里的？我是张掖苏南县的。挺好的。嗯。呃，然后你是呃西藏人是吧？我是藏族。藏藏族。啊，对对对。哦，嗯、呃，谢谢你那个今天那个呃送我们到张掖，那个呃很高兴认识你啊。很高兴，很高兴认识，我也我也很高兴认识你们。对。We're here in z h a n g y a And we just arrived at a barbecue place, and just to tell you a little bit how the prices work, everything here is one RMB, and everything down here is two RMB. So I just ordered a bunch of stuff, and I, don't, I think I'm going to really enjoy this. I really love shao kao or Chinese barbecue. And here I've got some yu、uh, tofu, which is、uh, fish tofu. And actually, there's no fish in this. It's、uh, it's just 100% tofu with fish flavoring. Yes. Just to show you that、uh, shao kao is also a very good option for vegetarians. In fact, our very good friend of ours is a vegetarian and he eats shao kao all the time. Isn't that right, Kao? That's right. That's, That's right. All right. Well, we're back in Sunan today after being back in Jiangye overnight, and、uh, we're at the Mati Su Temple, which translates as Horseshoe Temple. Yes, this is the only Gados that was built on a snow mountain in China. That is, well, in China、yeah. at least. So uh, it's uh, it's a great sight to be here. It's the first time I've actually been to a grotto in China.、Um, so、um, yeah, I'm loving the scenery here today. It's a beautiful place, a beautiful day, and.、Um, Yeah, it's it's pretty overwhelming to be honest. Yes, and just a second ago, I heard some Tibetan monks chanting over there. It sounds like everyone's in prayer, so that should be a sight to see too. And we'll try and get some of that on camera, but、uh, it really depends if, whether they're comfortable with it or not. We, so we, we'll we see. Do, we do want to be respectful of the local religion, after all. The Mati Su is another famous site in Sunan County. The first caves were dug about 1,600 years ago, and most were turned into temples. Okay, so we just also found out that there's a waterfall、uh, up on the mountains. However, to see that、um, the horse riding costs 200 RMB, it's pretty steep.、Um, but、um, I guess we won't be seeing that today.、Um, maybe next. Time. Maybe next time, yeah. Built during the Jin Dynasty, then when the Mongols came over and established the Yuan Dynasty, they converted it from Chinese Buddhism to Tibetan Buddhism. So we can see a lot of references to Tibetan Buddhism in this temple. All right. Well, that was a wrap today for、um, Mati Sir, and I'm here stuffing my face on、um, some very good cakes. These are called the Red Jujube cakes, and、uh, they're pretty good actually. 
a local delicacy. Red zuzu bees are actually grown in Sunan County, just like the red beans we had yesterday. Here's our driver for today, and um, she's going to give us a bit more information on uh, the Horseshoe Temple, the Mati Si Temple, that is in Chinese. Hey, 你好，那个你能给我们介绍这个马蹄寺的那个历史吗？马蹄寺它是一千六百年的历史了，现在是。嗯，这个马蹄寺的由来就是传说中呢，就是马蹄寺是，呃，这个在《西游记》里面，唐僧骑的这个白龙马，到了这个，呃，马蹄寺这边呢，下来在这边喝水的时候，爬下的马蹄。所以说，在这边形成了马蹄寺，取名叫马蹄寺，这就是马蹄寺的由来。Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll be taking the train to Xining. Trying out delicious local delicacies. Tucking in to Tibetan yak meat pies. Mm. Visiting the Dongguan Moss. Women are actually allowed to come in here, and it's also more tourist friendly. Watching the two people dance and perform. And unlike the top part, where it was more of a grainy smell, and sampling local baijiu. And that is Brazil.